Sometimes I go too long, but oh my gosh. Now that is a sloth. Everyone, the sloth is a great prehistoric animal from the standpoint of how long it's been on the planet. The prehistoric sloth, they say, weighed over a thousand pounds. They have been, they've discovered the, the, the remains of these animals, obviously petrified, but see here, you, your hand can disappear up there. That's all fur, this animal here. Now, Bob, that is a two toed sloth, by the way. How do I know? Because he got two toes. <laughs> uh, no, there's three toes on the back foot, but he's got two on the front. There's a three toed sloth. It's bigger than this one. It looks just like the, this sloth as well. But that's one of the hardest animals. <laughs> Here's rabies. <laughs> but what he does have, everyone, and I've only seen this one time. I was taking a picture for a, a newspaper in Florida. The girl had a sloth she's worked with for four years, holding it. Not that they hold it as you saw, but she was holding it for a picture. It's amazing. I knew they had teeth, but I now know. The teeth about that long, the front, two big ones here, right? Two big teeth up front here. They're dull as you can be, just like they're, they're level chiseled off. For some reason, we don't know why, the sloth went over like this, like lightning. She was standing right next to the public sloth. The sloth went over like this. Have you ever heard of like a pop, a, like, like a pow, like a blue, a, you know, a pop, like a crack? Went all the way through her, right to her bone. She immediately fainted and fell over. Only because it, the, I can't imagine the pain. So that's what they do as the last means of defense. They have no other defense, by the way. You can see they have no feet or it couldn't run or anything else. Well, the slowest moving mammals in the world, they can live their whole life in four trees. Now, why would that be hard for you to film? Think about it. It rains in the Amazon. It rains, especially the Amazon, not necessarily a lot in Central, or in, uh, uh, Central America, but South America, in these jungles, it rains. So what happens? Algae grows on his fur, all right? Algae, green algae. Then he, he sleeps in the daytime, by the way. This animal's nocturnal, mainly nocturnal. So he sleeps in the daytime. So he has to have camouflage. So Mother Nature gave him that by turning him green, but the fur turns like a moss green. You get them the, the, the crunch of a tree, and they actually, they actually hang out on the rivers. To, to be safe from predators, they might climb up there. And you, there's no way, no way in the world you ever know that's an animal, unless you have a guy. There's no way in the world you ever know it's an animal. But that's how he protects himself. Now, they do come down out of the tree one day a week, only one day a week. You kids know what it is. Why? They come down the ground. Why? Do you know the math? What do you major in? Slothology? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you say that? Well, who said it? Somebody out there said it. Oh, you did. What do you major in? Slothology? I just made that up. Oh, it's one That's very good. Every animal has to go to the bathroom, okay? Anyway, he comes out of the tree one day a week real slow. He goes to the bathroom real fast. Then he goes back up in the tree because he knows that he went, if he went to the bathroom in the treetop, people would say, why would he do that? Because if he goes to the bathroom in the treetops, animals like the jaguar, the ocelot, the harpy eagle, which hear the crawfish come down and definitely go up and take him out. They also, believe it or not, only seen it once, can swim. And who would think that creature there could swim at all? But he can. Not, not, he would never do that. They do fall out of the trees every once in a while because, you know, he eventually drown because he can't swim far. But they can do in short distances. That cone, by the way, is used for clothing up in the Andes Mountains. If I'm in the Amazon filming, I decide I can go take a trip uh, all the way up there to the Andes to film the condors up there. Then up there they have sloth gloves, sloth hats, sloth jackets. It's part of the culture. We have a culture here. We wear, we, we, we wear leather and that kind of thing. The sloth, though, is not an endangered animal. It is threatened in some parts of South America. I'm going to tell you, this guy here, he's from National Geographic. Can you believe this? I'm lying. He's not, but I'll tell you. He, he might be working for me. You're, you're very good. Along with all the people. But this camera working, I'm going to tell you something. I do a lot of theaters. I do over 80 a year. This has to have some of the best cameras here and the equipment here. A round of applause for your beautiful theater. I'm serious, guys. You know what's going to happen here. You know what I do? Just for heck of it. We travel all the time. We just got in uh, late last night, but I don't know where it was, filled up or something. Anyway, if I just want to have fun, we have the time. I'll say, okay, I look for the hotels, motels, and say, no pets allowed, our favorite places. So I, I pull up our two trucks. I said, you get the sloth, you get the, the, the crazy looking bird follows them. I got a pink one, and I got, uh, you'll see a python about eight, nine feet long. We put all these animals, start walking in the hotel like this, and then get behind the desk, the person goes, my gosh, you know better than this. You don't allow anything like that. You know, we don't allow animals. I said, ma'am, according to federal law budget 1046-2 of, of our federal code, these are native species. They can stay in any hotel in the world. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know. 